what's happening guys today we are going to talk a little bit more about the uh, stepper motors and the stepper motor that we are using today same one we used in our last video it's uh let's see if we can bring this up here and get it to focus right right it is the 28 byj-48 it is a 5 volt dc stepper motor and they come with these nice little driver boards so if you want some more information about that check out the video link down below our introduction to the stepper motors now on to today's project which i'm calling precise stepper motor control what we are doing is we are controlling this stepper motor which I've just glued a little pointer on so you can see it moving with a rotary encoder. Now let's zoom in here so you can see the connections. They are uh, incredibly simple. Let's start with our stepper motor. You see right here we have our N1, N2, N3, and N4, which go up here to our Arduino. And they are just simply connected to pins 8, 9, 10, and 11. Now, our rotary encoder, we have clock, data, and switch, which are connected on our Arduino to pins 2, 3, and 4. It's very important that the clock pin be connected to pin 2 because we're going to be using an interrupt. Now, with all that being said, the only other connections that we have here are our power connections so we're taking five volts from the arduino and the ground from the arduino and we're just running them over here to this little board nothing but a basic power distribution and that's it so let's go look at the code and what will happen is when we twirl the rotary encoder clockwise the stepper motor will move clockwise and vice versa pretty cool pretty easy but what it allows you to do is have very precise positioning of this stepper motor oh we've also added in a feature where if you click the rotary encoder button it will reset the motor all right let's go take a look at the code okay here's our code for the precise stepper motor control we're using the stepper.h library which is installed by default when you install the Arduino IDE, so nothing extra needs to be added. We are going to include the stepper library because, well, we need it. And we're going to define our number of steps as 32 for this particular stepper motor. We're going to create two volatile Boolean variables that are needed for our interrupts. The first one is turn detected, and the second one is rotation direction they need to be volatile because they're going to pop in and out of the interrupts okay we're going to create a couple of constant integers here and these are where our rotary encoder is connected a clock pin on pin 2 data on pin 3 and the switch on pin 4 we're going to store the position of our stepper motor in this variable called rotary position and we're going to store our previous position in this variable and the number of steps to take in this variable. Then we're going to create an instance of the stepper library called small stepper, telling it the number of steps which we set above and the pins we're connected to in one, in two, in three, and in four. Now this is our interrupt routine that runs if the clock goes from high to low. So the first thing we do is delay 4 milliseconds just to debounce everything. And then we're going to check the clock pin and the data pin. And if the data pin is high when the clock pin is high, then nothing happens. If the clock if one is high and one is low, then we go clockwise. And if one is low and one is high, we go counterclockwise. And we say turn detected is true. Now next up in our setup we're going to set our pin modes for the clock, the data, and the switch and we'll set the switch high. So it's always given us a 1. Next we will attach an interrupt 
interrupt zero, which is always on pin two, which we'll call the routine ISR, and it will happen on the falling edge. Then in our loop, we're going to set the speed to 600. And we'll say if digital read of pin switch is zero and nothing happened, or the button has been pressed, else we move our motor and we set the position. Now we say if a turn has been detected, our previous position equals rotary position, so we save our last position, and then we check the direction of turn. If the rotary position is less than, we move counterclockwise. If it's greater than, we move clockwise and we turn off our flag. Then we do our move. If previous position plus one is greater than rotary position, we move clockwise. If not, we move counterclockwise. And that's all there is to it. Alrighty, so we got the code all in our brains. Plug her in here. Everything seems copacetic. We turn clockwise, we get clockwise. Now we're moving 50 steps at a time here, and you can certainly change that to make the motor move in larger or smaller steps. Now we'll move counterclockwise. And you can see the uh, LED lights here on the motor control board showing us the different steps. And then, of course, if we click the button, we go back to our step zero, our starting position. And because we're using interrupts, we're pretty good about skipping steps. But, of course, you're always going to have them with the rotary encoder. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped. If it did, please give me the big old thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and please share this video or another video that you liked somewhere else to help me grow the channel. That's it. Get out. I'll see you guys next time. What are you still doing here? Go on. Ain't nothing else. Shoo.